and come in peace. Now, all I want to know is I'm looking for a game to review. But I'm looking for a game to review that's a good adventure game that's frustrating, but it's not a shitty game. Ah, I see that you seek a game far beyond the regions of the unknown. Your quests, oh, your quests, your quests will be long and grueling. Only you will be able to find this game. <laughs> but to find it will be the most daunting challenge of all. Now, I've played a lot of games on PlayStation 1, Sega Genesis, Nintendo. I mean, I played a lot of old school games, so I'm kind of looking for something a little modern, yet it still has that old school appeal to it, you know what I mean? Many gamers have reviewed this game, but a lot of them have not gone far in depth enough to explain the true nature of his frustration. You have to find this game, but to do it will be one of the greatest challenges you have ever faced as a gamer and as a man. In your future, I see a river. Oh, I see a long, drawn out, dirty, muddy river. All right, so I'm gonna be looking for a river, all right? That's cool, so. Like, where exactly do I find this game? You must cross this river to reach the game. Waiting for you will be one of the greatest challenges ever. You must find this game and defeat it within 24 hours. By doing so, you will be able to release the souls who have tried and also give the game justice it has never received. Do so, and your freedom shall be given. Huh? Oh, oh shit! It's a tap. It's ten thousand dollars. The hell? Huh? Oh hell no! I'm not fucking with that again. You know what happened with that the last time? Scarface. Oh shit! Like a letter or something. What the hell is this? Oh wow! It's like I need to head back home.
I never knew they made a game for the mummy. I mean, I thought they should have made a game. I mean, it was one of the best treasure adventure movies of the 21st and 20th century. And, you know, the whole theme of Brandon Frazier, you know, and Rachel Weiss, And, I mean, the whole movie was a great movie. And it, it led to a great trilogy. They probably are going to still make more like other ones. It's, you know, and, of course, they're coming out with one this summer. But never knew they made a game for this. And this was the first game of its kind. I mean, it was developed by Universal Studios, who, of course, you know, wasn't even used to developing video games. So it was much different. But... I've never really seen many review reviews on this game and I've never really seen this game been given the justice I think it should be given. So it's time to dig into it. Rush, the rush, man, the rush of memories. It never gets old, it never gets old. This game was developed by Rebellion Developments and approved by Konami. Now, Konami wasn't at its greatest point at this time. I mean, they were already dealing with the garbage Contra Adventure games, Gradius was finished, and Castlevania Symphony of the Night seemed to be their only meal ticket. So this whole transition to movie-based related games seemed to be a really good idea and their only chance for survival. And since this movie was successful in the theaters, they really need to do so. The opening begins with you trying to gain access to all of the temples within the depths of the ruins. Your objective in each stage is to obtain a relic so that you can proceed to each temple. You have the opportunity to explore and gain treasures, and for every four vases or gold urns or statues that you collect, you'll get an amulet, which is probably the most effective weapon in the game. The controls aren't that fluid. You move around fine, but moving and stopping takes a while to get used to, and when you're trying to jump from one platform to another, you better master how to do this. Now in order for you to reach the next room or solve a specific riddle, you need the star key, which is a diamond shaped object. But to get it, you have to make sure that you kill all of the enemies around. I mean, you can't leave a single bone behind because if you do so, you're going to be stuck in the same room for about an hour. When you enter the first temple early in the game, you'll encounter these tomb robbers and then you'll encounter these skeletons. But then after that, you'll start encountering these things whose face looks similar to a bowl of oatmeal that's been out in the middle of the Sahara Desert on a regular 140 degree day. I mean, is he fucked up because of the design or the pixelated 64-bit graphics? You have a rather fair assortment of weapons to endure the challenges to await you later on. The most reliable weapon in the game is the machete or the sword you begin with. Then you have the double 38 switch okay, but if you aren't frugal with your ammo and you're lazy with exploring the temples, then they'll become very, very useless very quickly. My best hope was to take out the enemies that block with the gun and then the ones that don't with the sword. But learn the enemy types because, you know, before doing anything on here, it'll be a very horrible mistake by just experimenting. As you go through the levels, you'll find that many traps and puzzles will be waiting for you to make a mistake. This makes it one of those games where you must understand everything in your surroundings. But sometimes it's hard to decipher between what's the foreground and what's something you need to actually be aware of. When you pass a level, First you have to kill a flood of enemies before doing so, and then you have to push open this tomb and then pick up a relic that Evie needs to stop the curse of the spell that wakens Imhotep. Most of the levels aren't too complex when figuring out where to go, but you do need to know everything that's in the room. By that I mean you need to know every stone that protrudes out of the wall, every statue that needs to be pushed, and plus every table that needs to be turned. You're going to be seeing a lot of Egyptian mythology as well. 
not not mythology as in Egypt, like but like the mythologies that the Egyptians study, such as this tradition. Here you see a tradition of sacrificing carnal desires in exchange for higher wisdom given by the higher entity Heru, which is represented by the snake, the falcon, and then the cow, which represents fertility and vitality through the goddess Isis. I'm sure most gamers think that these are just old paintings to make the place look good. And you see this all over the game. I mean, it's something you would think would be forbidden. If these were the people that the Egyptians worshipped, that means everybody worshipped them. So why do they look like this? This game is really easy until you reach the fifth level, the River of Blood. You begin platforming and trying your best to avoid slipping into the river, but it seems like enemies gang up on you as soon as you cross the platforms and it's such an inconvenience. Man, this part where you have to chase this damn Benny guy through the fucking obstacles is a sharp pain in the ass. And if you're trying this for the first time, it's really going to be hard. I mean, you're going to be needing a lot of patience with the fire and being careful with the loss and all. And it's like the hit detection is so inaccurate and will allow objects to just like, it's like you get sucked towards the object and then it counts as a hit. Like, damn, how does a grown man die from tripping over a log? It's not even like this is made with spikes or anything. It's just a log. Like, is it made with stone, I guess? But it's not even like it's bigger than I am. I mean, it's, it don't even have en this enough velocity to roll me over. It just kills me by touching me. This makes absolutely no sense. Yeah. So how do you like blood surfing? As you go down this river of Campbell's tomato soup, you'll need to jump above broken pillars. And then you have to be extremely precise in doing so. And any miscalculation automatically leads to death. Then you'll explore through more areas where enemies like to jump in front, on the corners, on the edges, and, the, and right in front of you in, on, while you're trying to jump in platform. To keep it simple, this stage's name basically explains everything you need to know. One mistake, and you're going to be among the river of blood. In this stage, the Hall of Scribes, or Scrapes or whatever. In this stage, the Hall of Scribes, you have to deal with these array of puzzles and tricky corridors you have to run out of. You have this part right here where it's like these beetles that start chasing you and you have to avoid penetrating spikes and slabs of granite blocking the way. And if you're fortunate enough to pass that, then you'll run into a room where you have to match this insignia on the wall where the lock is on the one that you're trying to modify. The difference in time, the difference this time is that if you don't match all the tablets together, regardless if it's your first attempt or not, You'll get sprayed with this toxic gas and die, and probably have to start all over. In this stage, it's the same crap as before, but now you have to dodge flies instead of beetles while avoiding the same shit as, you know, before all the same crappy enemies. It's like, fuck, like, this part is just more fucking aggravating. You're gonna have to pay close attention to this insignia shit on the wall again. Jump down to the sponges sitting on the, this tomato soup. And then surprise these fucking mummified archers away from you. And if you run out of bombs, you're fucked. And then there's this part where you need to trigger this pillar to collapse. But the only way to do so is to get close as possible. And fuck. Believe me, you will not pass this part without dying once. In the beginning of the Storm of Sand, you have to be aware that everywhere you go is not a safe zone to walk. You have to decipher the ground sand from the quitsand or you'll lose a life. Then you have this bullshit with the thing that falls on you after you break the law that holds it up. And shortly afterwards, Impotel chases you through more bullshit like the Tasmanian devil going after the Roadrunner, but instead of the Roadrunner, he's running like he's searching for his mate because the way he looks, it's like it looks like whatever is on his mind, he's trying to concentrate as hard as possible on focusing on getting it. I mean, I mean, you tell me, what the hell is this? It, it at least looks manageable enough for me, you know, to get through the fucking temples as quickly as possible. But why the hell does my character, Rick, run so goddamn silly? This is like the worst, silliest run I've ever seen in a video game. When you get inside this crypt, the former mistress of Emotep wakes up, and then you have, to, you have to go through all these color icons on the ground to send her back to hell. But she's going to send you there first a couple of times. Come on, go, 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 fuck. Like, did she just suck his soul out? 
figuratively, literally, and sexually, all you're going to be needing really to worry about is running. Just run, 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 or get sucked out of existence. Man, when you go deeper into the caverns, that's when you really start to see how shitty the jumping mechanics are. It's hard to calculate exactly where you need to stand when you're trying to make the right jump. Fuck. Is he supposed to run and grab onto the ledge? This makes no fucking sense. Oh, do I... What? Oh, I get a lift from the skeleton. Let me try to make this perfect. Got it. Unless you've done this in, in real life, you have no idea how difficult this jump is. Alright, damn. I have to kill more skeletons on the other side now. But if I kill them, I won't have a way to get back over here. Shit. This is a real messed up situation. Alright, let me recall this. First of all, when you're going through all this shit, you jump down to this little ledge right here and then you kill off all these skeletons. And then you'll run around and collect some ammo. But then you get to this one part right here where you have to make this jump. But you'll try everything in the world to jump. I mean, you, you try to jump and then grab on. That doesn't work. You try to jump from like, you know, a slight distance going back, you know, and then that doesn't work. Everything you try literally does not work. So then when I, when I randomly just walked back and was just killing enemies, I winded up like standing on top of the skeleton and then, you know, just randomly jumped and then made it over. But now I'm stuck over here. I don't have a way to get back. I mean, this is some fucking real bullshit. I mean, this shit is no different than running away from an angry mob with torches and pitchforks and then climbing up a hillside somewhere where they can't climb up and see you. And then you just sitting there, you know, you're, you're all the way up there looking down, laughing. And then you realize that you dropped your wallet down there. And now you have to go all the way down there and get it and then get back all the way up there without them seeing you. It's like, this is some fucking bullshit. All right, this looks to be the only possible option. Here, I only got one chance at this. You got to clear this jump. Oh, yes. This has got to be the hardest jump in video game history between this and that jump I had to do on Magician Lord. When you reach the tombs of death, you'll encounter ghost skeletons. Then you'll realize that they move faster than every enemy in the game and it's impossible to escape from them. And it's like they love to crowd you at the wrong times too, you know. Then there's this part when you have to move this barrel out of the way to get it, to get the star key. But then afterwards, you have to jump from like beyond visibility onto a smaller platform to make it out of here. Then later, you will fall into these continuous rooms where skeletons emerge on the ground and then you have to fend them off to keep to keep up. Uh. Then later, you will fall into these continuous rooms where skeletons emerge from on the ground and you have to fend them off to keep progressing. When you go through more crypts and then you have to destroy more ghosts, you'll reach a room where you drop to this circular arena area to fight Anubis. Anubis requires you to attack whenever he falls to the ground because then a swarm of flies will come out and then you'll need to destroy them. Now don't, don't make the mistake of firing a bunch of ammo because that'll just waste a bunch of bullets for later on. You know, just throw a few of those bombs and then he'll drop his head on the ground and then shoot the flies and then you could probably even knife a few of them. I mean, it conserves a lot of ammo that, like I said, you definitely are going to need later on. This level is really dark. Man, it's like you literally need the sun to be right outside the building to light this place up. There's a fucking multitude of ghosts. And those damn beetles are more annoying than stepping on an ant bed and trying not to cringe after every step that you take. Luckily, this stage isn't as long as the other ones. And your whole purpose basically is to escape before this place crumbles and squishes you into pieces. After all of that, you reach the room where Emotep holds Eevee captive. At first, you're supposed to hop over to the platform and then break the chains of, with the golden sword that you have and then free her. Then you have to survive a long stint of ghosts while he shoots these blue fireballs at you. You're given two health, so you have to use them wisely, but it's damn near impossible to reach them when these bastards come from behind you. And another problem is that it's hard, to, it's hard as hell to find these things. It's like you're running around in this square room and then you have to climb onto these ledges, you know, to get up there. But by the time you find it, sometimes it'll be too late because these damn ghosts will get you. 
Alright, finally, they got the bull. Man, this game's pretty intimidating. And, oh, wow. Oh, can't die. I don't know, his immortality is down. Only got one shot at this. Got him. Whew, man, that was a hell of a game. That was a hell of a game. Now, I can't really say if it's a bad game or a good game because it was really frustrating for one. But it had a, it's a bad game, but it had a lot of good elements to it. And it's a lot of games I played like that. And that's why I call them frustrating games. Now, the game, like the movie, a lot of people thought was cheesy and couldn't really stand the test of time. But of course, this summer, they're coming out with a movie called The Mummy. And I guess, I don't, I don't know if it's supposed to be a sequel or a remake or whatever. But we're going to find out if it's going to be worth seeing or not. And of course, they're probably going to make a video game off of that. And I'm going to review it just like I'm going to review the other series of movies, like the Scorpion King and the um, the Jet Li movie when they had uh, they went into the uh, the tomb and everything. I'm going to review those games in the future, but we had to at least focus on the one that was the turn of the century because this game had a lot of elements in it that I've never really seen in video games. A lot of stuff I didn't expect they would even put in the video game. I mean, I honestly thought this would have been forbidden, but it's been a it's actually a pretty good adventure game. I mean. You know, it's very frustrating for one, but certainly something that I would say worth checking out. It's better than most movie-based video games I've played, and I actually enjoyed it to some degree. But that's The Mummy for the PlayStation. Stay tuned because you're going to see more reviews from the series of movies, and the frustrated game reviewer again is out.